Welcome! In this lesson we are going to introduce systems of differential equations. Uh, previously we've studied individual differential equations that have modeled one dependent variable at a time, but it's often the case that we have, for example, competing species, a predator-prey situation where we want to model the evolution of both populations and they perhaps affect each other. Uh, the prey affects the predator by providing a food source, but the predator consumes the prey so they affect one another's rates of change. Also, if we have multiple lakes running into each other and we want to model a contaminant flowing through those lakes, then it would make sense for us to uh, have, be, have the ability to model the amount in each of those individual lakes. So we're going to focus on studying two differential equations at a time, especially at the beginning of our analysis. And we're going to assume that these variables that x can depend our dx dt is a function of potentially t, x, and y. Uh, before, without having two differential equations, we would, we would have said that dx dt is a function of t and x, uh, or the dy dt is a function of t and y, but we've never had the situation where we have more than one input variable. And that shouldn't pose much of a problem for us because we are interested in how these two things interact. So if I were to draw my two dependent variables, I have two dependent variables, x and y, this could represent the number of prey, the number of predators, and both of their rates are determined by time, but they also may be related to one another. And that's what we're allowing for the possibility of. So we have a number of different types of systems of differential equations. One is called a completely decoupled system. So suppose Ann and Bill both open bank accounts, Anne's pays 4% interest each year with an initial deposit of $250, and Bill's pays 3% interest per year with an initial deposit of $300. Then, if A represents Anne's balance and B represents Bill's balance, both as a function of T in years, then it follows that the change in Anne's balance in dollars per year is going to increase by 4% of whatever her current balance is. For Bill, that's going to be 3% of his current balance a of zero, that is, Anne's initial balance is 250 and Bill's is 300. So the reason we call this system completely decoupled is because the rates of change do not depend on the other variable. For example, we see that A, its rate of change is, is only dependent upon the value of A. The rate of change of B is only dependent on the value of B. And these are decoupled in the sense that they're, they're not paired. When we talk, think about a couple, we think about them as being together or related. But these are unrelated. It just so happens that they both model balances. And so it makes sense for us to analyze them collectively, especially if we want to compare their balances over time. We see that Anne's money is growing faster, but she has less to start. Bill's balance is growing slower, but he has more to start. So we want to maybe analyze what's going to happen to their balances in the long run. So this is a completely decoupled system since neither rate depends on the value of the other dependent variable. This type of system can be solved by solving each ODE independently. In fact, there isn't much to do here because uh, if we could solve this by itself with separation of variables, then we would end up with A of T equals K E to the 0 0.04 T. And that's again, A equaling that means that the only function whose derivative equals 0 0.04 of its original function is going to be uh, of, of exponential form. And then given that a of 0 equals 250, we make those substitutions in there, solve for k, and we get a of t equals 250 e to the 0 0.04 t. For b of t, similar process. For b of t, it's, it's going to be k e to the 0 0.03 t. And we probably should distinguish between these k's, um, not that we're going to end up using them collectively, but we probably should call this k sub a, and maybe we should call this k sub b, just to emphasize that they're not the same initial values. And you'll see later on that the k's actually do end up mixing into one another for non-partially decoupled systems. So b of 0 is 300, and making those substitutions, 300 for b, 0 for t, we get k of 300, and so b of t is equal to 300 e to the point 0, 0.03 t. So if we take a look at a graph of these functions now, 
So here we have in, in red, we have Anne's balance. And here we have Bill's function. And the reason we know that from this is because Bill's balance starts off higher, but you can see it grows at a slower rate and the difference between their two functions gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then eventually at some point here, Anne's balance exceeds Bill's balance. And so it's of interest to us to be able to conduct this analysis so that we can see over time what's, what's going to happen, especially if we're interested in these specific two people.